Hey everybody, this is Perch. Captain Marvel. Okay, lots have been said about Captain Marvel, and uh, Captain Marvel has become a bit of a lightning rod for, I, I would say, you know, this battle between old fans and new fans. And although I don't even think that's representing it fairly, because it's unclear at times if, you know, what are we talking about with fans? Maybe a better way to put it would be old customers and new customers, except given the sales numbers, it doesn't seem like there are that many new customers, but Captain Marvel seems to become the poster child for how this battle plays out. And it's always this, it, to me, I'll, I'm just going to throw this out there and piss off everybody. It's always this very disingenuous battle, because when people come in to defend Captain Marvel, there's always a, Captain Marvel's always been my favorite character. I, I love the comic. I buy every single one, and I, I don't know what all these people are talking about. The, their problems with Captain Marvel. I mean, that just must be a bunch of bigots out there who just don't like women superheroes. And, and yet, but it's like, okay, but the numbers are the numbers, right? The sales aren't there. So I'm glad that you have been a fan of Captain Marvel forever, um, whatever that means exactly. You don't have to justify that you've been a, a fan of Captain Marvel forever. That's the that's the part that um, it's the part that always gets me is like the, the people want to come in, they want to really explain uh, how how they've been an OG Captain Marvel fan, Carol Core forever, and it's like, yeah, that's a relatively new thing though. In the grand scheme of comics, the idea of Carol Core and and all this stuff. I mean, I, I mean, if, <laughs> were you into comics or not pre House of M? when there was this effort that kind of came underway to try and make Carol a bigger deal. I, I mean, it, and it, the answer doesn't necessarily matter. Like you, you don't have to be a long-term comic creator in order to, or a comic uh, fan customer in order to appreciate something, but it let's at least be honest with where we're coming from. Right. It, it, I don't think it makes any sense to try and, you know, I, I just, I hate this game that goes on of like, well, I, I, I've always been this fan, and everybody I know has always been this fan. And in my comic store, the comics fly off the shelves like nothing else. And it's it's like, all right, we have to deal, live in reality. At the same time, I also dislike the alternate point of view, the other side, which is like, uh, Carol represents everything that is fascism about Marvel Comics. And it's like, all right, all right, okay, calm, calm it down there. Let's just... <laughs> Let's just calm it down. It's a lot. I've made this point before, which does always irk people, which is it's a lot of attention given to something that really doesn't have much of an impact one way or another, regardless. I mean, the, the kindest thing I think you could say about Captain Marvel is that it just kind of is there. Right? Probably the cruelest and the kindest thing. It, it just, there, the amount of noise to Captain Marvel doesn't uh, equate to, you know, anything really until the movie. And the movie comes out, makes a billion dollars, people liked it, cool, but the comic book hasn't been able to replicate that movie experience. I mean, and certainly not in terms of popularity. And so there's a lot of theories about this, a lot of you know people with their opinions on why Captain Marvel is this or that or you know what have you. Um, but here's not, not my theory exactly. Well, well, here's a theory. Here's a crazy, crazy theory to just kind of throw out there around Captain Marvel. And um, it's it's a simpler one. But I, I'm starting, I suspect this may have more to do with it than, than people think. And it's basically this. Uh, Captain Marvel is drawn radically differently in almost every comic she is in. And I'm, I just was noticing, if you go back and you look at, you know, over time, how Sue Storm was drawn, how Storm uh, was drawn from the X-Men, you, you typically had a fairly consistent look for Storm. Um, even when, weirdly enough, I mean, I remember back when uh, Michael Mignola was coming out to the scene, and I loved his artwork. It looked radically different from others. His versions of characters, he had a, an art style that was extremely distinctive. You put a Mignola up against like a Rob Liefeld, you would get two very, very different versions of Storm or Wolverine. And, uh, you know, but, you know, very, very different. With Captain Marvel, um, if you look at that character and you look at how she's drawn, it is all over the place over the last 10 years. When I say all over the place, I don't mean just drawing style. I mean, sometimes she's drawn super tall and lanky. She could be a, you know, six foot four man. 
sometimes she's drawn kind of short and stubby, like she's, you know, maybe 5'2 and weighs about 180 pounds. Uh, sometimes she's drawn with a, like a really fat face, sometimes thin face, sometimes giant nose, sometimes with stringy hair, butch hair, uh, all, all over the place. Captain Marvel uh, has very, very little consistency of how they draw that character. And I understand, you know, that, that it's, it's, you know, the words and the writing and all the rest. But one of the things that I think is key to comic books that is this kind of people tend to ignore it or overlook it is that stylistically things should be consistent. Things should line up. The comic should present at least some level of, of, you know, regular look. And, and again, you might say, no, nah, it's not true. What about, you know, you had John Romita Jr. and then Jim Lee, and you have these different artists, definitely have different styles. But even in those styles, the, the general character look the same. Storm in the X-Men, even if you're going from a John Byrne to a John Romita Jr. to a Paul Smith to a Silvestri to Jim Lee to any, you know, you go through all these different artists, Storm would, you know, typically have about the same height, about the same build, about the same chest size and, and all the rest. And her facial, uh, you know, features would be different, but not radically different, not, not crazy different. Generally, she looked fairly similar. Um, with Captain Marvel, like it is, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's all, it, it's really left open to, you know, artist interpretation. It is not in any way consistent. And I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'll have a bunch of pictures up on the screen. If you're listening to this just in audio, it's a little bit tougher. But if you look at it on the video, there's, there's a much wider range. The costume has changed, certainly over the years. We have our, our new current one. But even there, there, there was this attempt of, like, we're going to put her in a helmet, give her a little mohawk, then we're going to take the helmet off. The helmet got lost somewhere on another planet, and we don't have that anywhere. Now she's got short hair. Now she's got long hair. Now we get it. it it's just, it's, it's completely, I, I don't know if there's any other character, in certainly in Marvel's universes, that has changed the appearance, both of just the costuming and the style, but also just, you know, given artists complete free reign to render this character any way they want. Like imagine, you know, and, and again, I understand there's like a massive difference between, uh, you know, Jim Lee putting a page down and Bill Sienkiewicz putting a page down. Completely different. And yet, with characters that those artists put together... Um, you know, even you take somebody like Psylocke. Psylocke has gone through major changes, you know, kind of British princess kind of look. And then she's got uh, the ninja thing going on and now it's somewhere in between and armor. And I'm like, they've, they've changed the costume, but still it was relatively recognizable as, as Psylocke. You didn't have somebody coming in and doing some completely bizarre style. I remember when, uh, you know, uh, Alred would come in and do uh, parts, or, or even Steve Ditko would do their take on characters. It would look very, very different. And, you know, readers would grumble. But it was the exception, not the rule, and it was very heavily weighted in their particular style. With Captain Marvel, they've brought in a lot of other artists who are, you know, relatively no-name people in the industry, people we haven't heard of before. And they just, they're like, well, you can draw her however she wants. And, and, and it's, it's nuts. I think that there's something to building up a brand, building up kind of a consistent character, building up something that you get, you, know, you kind of want your people, your, your customers to rally around and say, ah, here's something I want. And if you, if you allow the character to just be drawn every which way from sometimes very polished comic art, you know, art Adams type style to super indie grunge, you know, strung out carols on Coke version, you have you have a, a wide variety of looks and everybody's going to map to different styles. Like I said, I like Michael Mignola. Some people hate him. Uh, I, I think that's kind of changed. Hellboy won a bunch of people over, but you know, back in the day, you know, there would be a lot of people who wouldn't pick up Mignola's work because it just, it, it was wrong to them. Um, it, I, I see that argument get tossed out around like, well, not every style is for every person. Absolutely true. But, you still want a style guide for the character. You still want the character to more or less like if, 
if uh, eight different artists are drawing a team up between Wolverine and Captain Marvel, you want always Captain Marvel to be a little taller than Wolverine because that's that's how they've been written. That's the that's the character that's been made. You wouldn't have like artist number one have Wolverine be like eight feet tall and and Carol be a midget, and the next one over you have uh, you know suddenly Carol's got super long hair and and you know looks like a a, a very generous uh, cup size, and then in the next one she looks like Mick Jagger. I mean, it's just like you 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 wouldn't do that even with different styles. You'd still try and get the characters more or less aligned to one look. Uh, the, 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 you know, to do otherwise is kind of just screwing around with your IP. It's, it's hurting it. And I think Marvel's kind of done this and, and Captain Marvel has been one of the most crazily rendered characters. I mean, even Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan has been far more consistently drawn across different things. You do not see people come in and give like super weird indie takes to Kamala on a regular basis. You, you definitely see that with Carol. Why? The part that I'm so confused about is Marvel clearly wants, and Disney, wants uh, Carol, Captain Marvel to be a big deal. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but how are you going to make this brand, this property, a big deal if you're allowing the character to be just drawn any way the artist feels like drawing that character, radically changing you know, the, the whole body makeup of, of the thing? I think that's hurting Captain Marvel. And I think that is also part of the reason why Fans, customers uh, get annoyed with that character is because it's it seems to be a complete free for all of how the character looks. Anyway, a weird little theory. You can tell me I'm wrong in the comments below. Let me know. But I, I the other thing that worries me is I'm seeing more and more of that. the uh, The standards around how characters are drawn are getting looser and looser. And again, nothing wrong with having artist style. Artists should have their styles, but the characters themselves should be vaguely recognizable and. That's that's not what we have anymore. So, I don't know. Tell me I'm crazy in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and thanks for listening.